we all fit in this great spectrum. And no matter where we are in this long spectrum, God is with us and God is restoring us. That God is in the work of restoring. So if you're over here and you're sacrificing God, it's like, well, God, I, I, you know, I, um, I'll stop that really inappropriate relationship if you do this. God is waiting to restore you and wants to restore you to do good and to leave all those things behind and have them have no more power over you. If you're in the middle where you're thinking about politics or somehow helping our nation uh, grow as uh, faithful people, God is waiting to restore this nation and waiting to restore us as God's people. And if you're over here and your lamp is starting to fade and you think that Jesus isn't coming and that what you've been doing as a Christian for so long doesn't work, God is waiting to restore you as well. Waiting to take that fire and to light it and to keep it going. So I have a story of restoration. Uh, my dad is a retired high school biology teacher. Uh, he taught for 25 years and then retired from that and he and mom opened a uh, Christian bookstore. In dad's 25 years, he did a lot to help students learn about kindness, love, and respect. He taught somewhat about life sciences and how frogs work and that type of stuff, and algae and those things. But what he really did, I think, in reflection on his 25 years, is that he taught kindness. He taught people how to love and respect one another. Many of his students have uh, kept track of Dad throughout the years, and many are still in contact with him today. And one such person, I'll call her Jennifer. Jennifer had been abused by every man she ever knew starting with her dad when she was four years old. In junior high, she met up with the wrong crowd, dated the wrong guys, and they continued various ways of abusing her. Dad was the first, and at the time, the only male she had ever met who showed her love and kindness. Showed her that she's worth something, and that there's a spirit inside of her that can grow. Jennifer was nervous about graduating from high school, and leaving the support system of the high school that she had. But Jennifer took that spirit of knowing that goodness is out there, and she became a truck driver. A truck driver. I think even today, truck driving is dominated by men. I think, right? I mean, yes. I love this road, this show called Ice Road Truckers, and they have Lisa Kelly, who's uh, one of the... Anyway, she's great. She's the only female I've ever seen on that show. Uh, because Lisa reminds me a lot of Jennifer. But... So she became a truck driver and learned how to survive and how to have her own voice in a male-dominated society. Because when you're driving a big rig, you're just as important as the guy next to you. Because you're in the driver's seat and you're in charge. So after that career, she decided to become get this, a longshoreman. <laughs> she worked on ships. She would go to sea for months at a time, being the only female on a thing made of tin or iron, wherever they made it, as they're floating around the ocean. So she was reflecting on her career in her early 30s in Japan, overlooking a beautiful bay. A couple of years before that, she had successfully sued her employer for sexual harassment and had won, and had changed the way that the company does their institutional business of dealing with uh, men and women. She was reflecting on that victory and how her life as a longshoreman was going actually quite well. And she remembered Dad, and she started to cry. First man to show her love and kindness. And she wanted to give Dad a gift, something that would be permanent, something that he could hold on to that would remind her him of her. So in this bay, there was a mothball section of U.S. former warships that uh, we had these ships that went there for the war and then certainly for uh, the restoration of Japan afterwards, and they'd been mothballed. They were sitting in this bay and they were sinking and falling apart. And uh, she knew that Dad loved time and he was a sailor and that he loved these things. And she remembered that there was a clock on every single one of these World War II ships that would ring to tell you when the next shift would begin. She had become uh, a Christian and knew about the praying in the morning and praying over lunch and praying in the afternoon and praying before you go to bed. She knew the four cycle of prayer that happens, that also happens to match the watch on her ships. And so she decided to go get one of those clocks. She paid a Japanese guy, 
she paid him to drive her over to one of these ships. And she jumped off and started climbing around a half-sunken ship. It was green. It had that moldy, um, slimy algae stuff that grows in days in Japan. If you guys have ever been there, have seen it. It's gross. It sticks to everything. And that day, Japan had been very hot and very humid. And here she is climbing around in a half-sunk ship up to her waist in this green, slimy, yucky stuff. So she made her way up to the bridge, and she found the clock that she had been looking for. Pulled out her screwdriver, undid the three screws to remove it from the wall, and it wouldn't budge. The, the clock had become a part of the metal behind it because it was so old. So she took the screwdriver and forced it off the wall, tucked it into her shirt, and then essentially swam her way to the boat. And then convinced the Japanese guy who owned the boat to let her back in because she's stoned. She had that green goo stuff all over her. So she got on the boat and then uh, proceeded to get the clock back into the United States. Apparently it's illegal, you can't actually do what she did. Uh, and apparently the U.S. government is kind of picky about the things that come into the United States. And uh, through her experiences of being a truck driver and through being a longshoreman, she had learned how to deal with men who like to put power over her. And she got the clock into the United States. She then started the long process of restoring the clock, of turning this dark green, ugly clock that didn't work into a bright, brass, shining, clear clock that rings as accurate today as it did in 38 when it was made. That clock is mounted on a beautiful piece of wood and it sits over the fireplace of my parents' house and it rings the hours for the shifts. It is a clock that I'm going to inherit that I'll pass on to my kids that they pass on to their kids. She did an act of restoration and it was an act of restoration that was shown to her. God's mission is to restore. God's mission isn't to know Christ because he knows Christ. God's mission isn't to make Christ known. That's our job. Our job is to show mercy, to show kindness, to have a voice for those who have no voices, to be the people to feed and to heal this broken, bleeding, and heartless world. And we do it one sheet of paper at a time. We do it for the homeless kids that don't have stuff at school. We do it through the way that we show each other love. We do it through the way that we lift one another up in this room and those people outside. That we, being restored by God, once red with ugliness, has been washed clean. We are a part of God's mission of restoring the world. And we do it by being by making Christ no. The mission of the church is to know Christ and to make Christ known. Today we're getting to know Christ. We get to know Christ in a variety of ways. We hear Christ through scripture, we get the breaking of bread, and we get to uh, share Christ or make Christ known with the passing of peace, with the receiving of communion. But more importantly, we know about Christ and make him known outside of these moments. God doesn't want your sacrifices. God wants you to show mercy and kindness. Jesus is there if your lamp is growing good. If the light that you're trying to hold in the middle of the night, waiting for the Master to come back, is starting to draw to an end. Jesus is there to restore you and to bring you back to life. Because that light is not only the light for you and for your Master to see. That light is the light inside of us that shines to the nation. To the nation that is craving to hear the good news that we can be happy people following God. So I implore you.